not telling me. Uh, yeah, so it is recording now. Okay. Okay, so, so hi, it's Lori Payne, and I want to introduce you to uh, my new friend, Ahmed Mohammed. So Ahmed's got a great background um, in the military, um, United Nations work, multi-countries. He's over in Egypt right now, and he's looking for a commercial uh, aviation opportunity uh, here in Winnipeg would be great. So Ahmed, can you just... Um, Introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your background so I can share that with them. Hello, how are how we doing? I'm, uh, I'm now uh, ex-military. I just retired from like uh, 20 days. I'm ex-colonel for 24 years working for the Air Force in Egypt. I took all my positions as air operation instructor and one of the three, one of three assistant for the head of the Air Force. My major job is like air operation and an instructor for the E2C and S3. I took all my tactical and strategic courses in the uh, in US and Egypt. And from 2012, 2000 until 2013, I was chief, I was one of the aviation family in the United Nations. The cell over there, I took my position inside the, this uh, cell as air operation, air mission request, flight following. And I would decide from my job to negotiate with the, the government of Sudan because I have this advantage to, to speak Arabic and English. And I know the culture very well in Sudan. So after I return back from the first journey from uh, UN, I returned back to the academy. I was an instructor for for like from 2014 until 2018, teaching aviation science, especially the air weapon and employment system material. And I got nominated again from the national service here in, in Egypt and the United Nations. They asked me to return back to Sudan to be the first chief military aviation for the United Nations in Sudan my job over there to follow up the individuals, like 30 individuals from different culture and country under my command, like 52 aircraft, 50 helicopter and two uh, fixed wing. And this my job description, like to maintain the daily flight schedule every day and taking the, uh, the, the stamp or the authorization from the government of Sudan. And to be honest with you, the chief of staff over there and chief aviation, the civilian chief aviation, was asking me many times to go with him to negotiate with the government of Sudan in, in many different directions. Like one time, if they have a problem with the government for making like uh, logistic uh, flights, they ask it for a lot to do. Like they ask it for trucks and uh, like 10 helicopters to do this and and they sometimes they was insisting to to use all the uh, demonstration flight, not by cargo. They needed only flights by the helicopter and all this stuff. So one of my job to go over there and go negotiate with the wali. This wali is like the mayor for the uh, the state. So many time I was joining the the team to to negotiate with them to get more benefit for the organization. And I stayed there for two years. And actually the last year it was the Corona time. So it was very hard for everyone. But I, I stayed there for one year without going back to my country. I was doing my job every day, like the day one. Even it was hard time for everyone during the, the COVID time. And for me, after I finished, I took from them two A buses to, during the, the two years, which is outstanding. I got the award from the United Nations in New York for doing a great job during this period of time. After I returned back in Egypt 2021, I was a chief operation in Sinai. The chief air operation in Sinai against Daesh for one year. And after I took my this one year, I, they put me like at the next level for being the chief military education at the recruitment center, which I was working under one star general command. And actually I was his co and most of the time I'm like the 
the command for the base because I was under my command directly, 3,600 individuals. I'm responsible for all their needs from food, uh, accommodation, logistics, everything. So for one year, I took another new experience. And I think I did a great job because I have now here a word I can show it to you from the, the Air Force for doing a great job during my command at the recruitment center. And I took my decision to, to retire because I need to try new challenge as a civilian. And actually they was pushing me to stay more because like one year and they will nominate me to be uh, a brigadier. But actually to be honest with you, after 24 years, I feel like خلاص, like I need to, to end this up and find a new challenge with different people, different country. That's why I'm seeking a, a new opportunity overseas. Wow. So you, and yeah, so you've been a squadron leader, instructor at an Air Command Academy University, nominated to the. I'm just reading from your bio here. Nominated to the United Nations, um, assistance for the head of the Air Force, asked by your country to. Uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, nominated by the UN to be chief of the military. Fifty-two aircraft. Yeah, two UN events. Management experience, chief of education for recruitment center for the Air Force, logistics, and all the problems in the base. And you're working closely with the generals, studied in Texas, Florida. And now you're seeking opportunity perhaps in Winnipeg, Canada, maybe with an aviation, new aviation company uh, here to work directly with yeah, the aircraft I, and the team. I forget to tell you something very important. What I told you now is not all my CV. I already I studied at civilian academies and I have human resource and management diploma. And also yes, yeah. I took courses from IATA like aerodrome management system, safety management system, ORM. Plus I took many courses inside the United Nations as uh, one of the courses. It was, uh, I think, uh, I say uh, uh, provincial, uh, the sexual har and the harassment, security in field, I took the, something like the, the Egyptian Ranger like this. It's called Be Safe inside the United Nations. And also I took a, a very important high strategic course here in Egypt called Preparing Country for the War. Oh, so okay. when I send you my Preparing Country for a War, how to prepare the country for the war? Oh, prepare. War, prepare preparation, yeah. Is that what you say? Yeah, prepare. Yes. 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 Yeah, I know. That as Egyptian, we didn't have this difference between the B and P. I know it's our problem. <laughs> no, your your English is very very good. I much appreciate. And you, yeah, so you speak English and Arabic, and you know the Gulf and the Middle East and Africa regions from your work experience. Fantastic! I'm so pleased to meet you. Thank you for letting yeah. us do this small video. Is there anything else you want to add in the end or um, you're going to send across your CV so I can share this video and um, we'll send across your CV? Thank you. I appreciate it for your time and you're so kind to give me from your time like this. I appreciate it. Thank you.